welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about, you know, getting a new diagnosis and kind of like the feelings and the experience that that can be and how like that can bring up a lot of things and how challenging that can be, particularly when you already have a chronic illness diagnosis. I'm just going to talk about my experiences. A lot of this is stuff that I have you know, also heard friends and seen friends go through. I was thinking about how when I was vlogging a couple of years ago, like really regularly, I was telling you about how I was experiencing all these new symptoms with, you know, coughing a lot and having all of these like respiratory issues. And then I kind of stopped vlogging with uh, the pandemic and stuff and I never really got back into it. And I feel like I never really told you what happened with that. Um, sorry, I need to move this lady. Then I thought about how it might be more interesting for you to hear me talk about um, like the whole experience of getting a new diagnosis rather than just me sitting down to tell you that I got diagnosed with asthma, you know what I mean? So yeah, what happened was I started experiencing all these symptoms and then I went through a whole diagnosis process which actually was longer than my fibromyalgia um, diagnosis process. I also took going to a doctor that wasn't maybe the right doctor for me. Um, not that they're not a good doctor, it's just I think that he he definitely got us on the right track and I'm still in a lot of the same, um, like I'm still on the same inhaler that he got me on. I feel like my new doctor takes more um, variables into account, uh, particularly because um, I feel like he, the doctor that I went to first was very reluctant on giving me a diagnosis. And this is something that I've found a lot um, is that a lot of medical professionals are kind of reluctant to give you a diagnosis, to give you a, like a word, to give you a piece of paper saying you have this. And I think that's really crazy because like, yeah, sure, ableism <laughs> is really harmful for us, but the diagnosis itself isn't a bad thing necessarily. And oftentimes it is really helpful and I feel like there's this like prejudice about like people kind of going after like you just want another diagnosis like we want to collect them like badges somehow and that's a really silly concept if you think about it because like why would you want to take more meds why would you want to have another thing that you have to look after another variable in your health we don't want more diagnoses but the the truth is you're experiencing the symptoms, you're experiencing the illness or the situation and it's good to have a name for it because having a name for it helps you with getting better treatment, it helps you with managing your symptoms better, it helps you with understanding what is happening in your body better and for me personally I've always been told by doctors or I used to be um, and then I kind of got better doctors but a lot of the doctors at the beginning would tell me like do not google my symptoms to be honest with you googling my symptoms has helped me more with managing them than um not than when i didn't know what was happening okay this is turning it into a whole new other review but like basically what i'm trying to say here is that i feel like a lot of our um healthcare systems are nowadays that are in place are built for people who are not chronically ill. They're built for people who will maybe break a leg or, you know, have appendicitis or whatever, or have a tumor. They'll get it taken care of. They will get better. They'll get on with their lives and they probably won't need the healthcare system again until, you know, something else happens that's um, temporary, that's not going to affect them forever. And it's not going to be something that they have to deal with on a daily basis. And I think when we, come in and we have health needs and we have chronic illnesses that are lifelong and we are diagnosed very young, I think that's really, that really stumps a lot of medical professionals. I think that can be really difficult for them because that's not what the system is built for. That's not the thing that they trained for. And that's really crazy to me because I feel like as a doctor, you should train for helping anybody who comes into your office needing your help regardless of what that means. I don't think that you should pick, be able to pick and choose who you help and I don't think that, you know, racial biases or, you know, sexual orientation or gender should really play a role in whether or not you get helped, but it does. Um, I've felt this personally where 
I am better treated by other by female doctors than I am by male doctors. I've never heard from a female doctor that I just have anxiety and I just need to get used to it. But I've heard that from multiple male doctors. And I feel like that's the thing that makes a diagnosis harder for us is oftentimes ableism, oftentimes is the hurdles that society has put there to stop disabled people from being able to enjoy spaces, to enjoy accommodations to enjoy life but that's a whole other video what i was trying to talk about <laughs> sorry I, I get this is not scripted obviously so i've been getting a little bit carried away what i really wanted to talk about in this video is like the feelings that come up when you get a new diagnosis when i first got diagnosed with fibromyalgia a lot of people told me that diagnoses are like pokemon you have to catch them all or that you know you never get just one you always have to have multiples and that you know there was this all of these little like catchphrases that people would say about diagnoses and like the chronic illness experience and I thought that it was really condescending sometimes and I felt like this weird sense of pride that I only had one diagnosis and that like that somehow made me better than other people because I had somehow escaped the other ones and I had managed to get through it without like finding all these other things that are wrong with me. And I feel like that a lot of that would internalize ableism. Then I started getting more and then I really had to face that feeling and that like shame of having multiple diagnoses and like that I failed somehow. This was some something that I'd done that there was something wrong with me. I think that that's a really common feeling um, and it's really silly to look at it on it now that I've had these multiple diagnoses for such a long time and I'm like kind of so used to it now that I'm like wow what a silly little bean that I used to be you think that you have control over things and you don't and when you get more diagnoses you kind of have to face the fact that you don't have more control over it than that you wish you had more and then you don't and that there's nothing you can do to like stop your body from finding more ways to backfire and to malfunction. A body is kind of like a clock in the sense that it works. Um, there's all these little mechanisms that work together to create another thing that works, right? So you look at it, you see the time, great. But underneath that, there's all these other things, I don't know about clocks, but like there's all these other things at work that need to be functioning perfectly in order for you to look at the clock and see the time. So. I think our body is a lot like that in the sense that if it, everything is working fine, it's not that impressive. Like you look at it and you see the time, but once things start to malfun malfunction, you kind of realize how intricate all of the systems are underneath and how all of them need to be working perfectly in order for the body as a whole to be working perfectly. If one thing is not working properly, one diagnosis, it stands to reason that over time, whether that is, you know, a few months, a few weeks, or a few years, that the other mechanisms in the clock will start to malfunction also because they're having to work overtime to make up for the system that is malfunctioning. So I feel like if one thing is wrong, then eventually other things will also start to go wrong. And that's just something that if you think about it rationally it makes sense but a lot of this isn't rational thinking a lot of it is feelings and your feelings don't always listen to reason and they don't always listen to rationality i think there's this feeling of that comes up a lot that you've done something wrong that you're not enough that you haven't that you've somehow failed and like this video is not for me just to, to be telling you that oh no you did you did as best as you could like you did but I want you to know that I also feel like that and that all of my friends that I know who are chronically ill also feel like that. I feel like the failure is a big one. The feeling of loss, you not only are losing another thing because like, for example, when I got my asthma diagnosis, it was like one more thing that's wrong with me. Like one more thing that I have to worry about. One more thing that plays into the other things and all these other things that I didn't have to worry about before. And I think that's really like a sense of loss of who you thought you were, the control that you thought you had over your life, of the independence that you had because a lot of um, disabilities mean that you need 
help. <laughs> you need help with things that you didn't need to ask for help for with before. The impact that your illness has not only on your life and like on every decision that you make, but also oftentimes on like the lives of the people around you. So I know that my health impacts my partner really greatly so that he can't just up and go and do whatever he wants because he needs to take into account whether or not my body is able to handle an activity that we want to do together. And I think that that has a really big emotional toll that isn't really talked about. Whenever you have people in your life, we not only have to think about the impact that the illness has on our lives, but also the impact that it has on their lives and how knowing that our health has an impact on their lives impacts us as well. Because that's something that I live with and that I kind of have been working on in therapy a lot is the guilt that I feel and the responsibility that I feel about how like my health impacts my partner. So I think that all of these things are really common and are really um, prevalent in our in our you know community in all of people that I know that are disabled and chronically ill and it's hard it's really hard to have to think about it all the time and to have to you know equate another variable into our lives and the other thing that's really difficult is sometimes getting the diagnosis itself can be quite hard I feel like with every diagnosis especially when you're a woman I cannot speak for you know any racism that because I've not experienced that, but I can definitely tell that it has been harder for me to get a diagnosis than if I was a man. There are things that make diagnoses be really difficult to attain. And, and so when you have a long wait until you actually have the answer and all of those months or years, you're experiencing these symptoms every day and you don't understand what's going on. You are trying to find ways to accommodate for them, but you don't know how and you don't know how to manage them and you have no help because you it's not like you can take any medication it's not like you can do any treatments because you don't know what you have so i think that that when you finally have that answer that name the thing like a word for the for the feelings and the symptoms that you have i think there's such a huge relief that comes with that and then you go online and you find other people who have the same thing as you and you realize you weren't alone and all this time there are all these people out there going through the same thing as you and that finally you can have access to like maybe medication or treatments or just coping strategies for the symptoms that you have and that's awesome and you have this like really huge feeling of like relief of like belonging of like finally i'm seen i'm valid you know but i think over time i don't want to say it goes away but it definitely like lessens and then other feelings take a bigger like take center stage effectively and i think the other feelings that come into play are loss and you know um kind of grieving the life that you had before and kind of coming to terms with this is forever like i'm never gonna feel better obviously you can improve and have more quality of life but it's really hard work and it, it's like every single day you have to work on it every single day and it's really hard because it, it, it may it means that you have to make some really tough choices sometimes it means that you have to put some things behind you that you wish you didn't have to. I don't know, I think there's a lot of loss and a lot of grieving that comes with it. I think the guilt that you have kind of imposed a set of rules and a set of like, a set of requirements for your life and that anybody who comes into your life now has to abide to these. Um, I think that can be quite difficult especially because we live in a society that is so ableist that it makes us feel like asking for accommodations is being really extra and really like demanding and i think a lot of guilt that i feel comes from that but also i think there's a huge level of like burnout that occurs when you have chronic chronic illness that people don't really talk about you're tired of being sick you're tired of having to deal with all of these admin and logistics and just like stress and everything that comes with being chronically ill and being disabled like you're tired of it you're tired tired of dealing with ableism you're tired of dealing with all of it it sucks it does not feel good you're in pain all the time you're always tired 
like life is just so much harder and it's okay to be mad about that and it's okay to be like tired of that and to be frustrated and like just be burnt out from that sadly there isn't really that much you can do you have to just like rest and get back to it tomorrow because it, it's forever it's not going anywhere when you're going for your first diagnosis like this is all new to you so medical bias and gaslighting and all of this is new <laughs> it's bad but it's new and like you've never experienced this before so you're kind of like trudging through your first time and it's exhausting and horrible and then you start you know managing your condition and you feel a little bit better and you're like ah okay i got this and then you start getting symptoms for something else and then you're like oh no i have to go through that whole thing again and then you do that and you have another diagnosis and you're like okay cool 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 i've got this i'm I've got it under control and then something else happens and then you go through another diagnosis and i think for me the hardest one so far was my asthma diagnosis, which is like the last official one that I have. Um, just because it was like bad doctors and doctors telling me that like it's probably nothing and that I think brought back a lot of the trauma that I have f from like just m medical trauma and medical like being mistreated by doctors and nurses and stuff when i did find a good doctor and we went after those answers they were really easy to find and surprisingly my asthma is like incredibly easy to manage i literally just take medication for my allergies and my inhaler and like i feel fine every single day yeah it just i don't know it just really sucks when you have to go through all that and then now there's all these like things that i can't have in my life like there's always a new set of limitations a new set of things that now you have to consider and that you didn't have to before um, and i think coming to terms with that is really difficult sometimes you just get on with it and then other times like yeah you have to get on with it but it really sucks because i wish i was doing something else so yeah if you are experiencing any of these things and you're going through this uh you're not alone we're we're, we're all going through it or we've gone through it at some point. Let me know what you're, what you think about this topic, and that's it. What you'd like me to talk about in the future, because uh, maybe hopefully I'll get around to it at some point. Um, I'm not very good at, at doing that, but I'll try. Uh, if you want to support my channel, by the way, you can. I don't know, if, like if you're new here and you haven't been around very long, I have a Patreon account, uh, and you can become a patron and help me out. Um, I am in the process of changing all my tiers back to like just one tier where you can donate however much you want and that's it like there's no perks really other than like you're helping me out have never been able to keep up with uh, the things that I hoped that I could offer and um, honestly like I, I just I, I can't really offer that much so but there's no like real perks other than you get to you're helping me out and if you can't do that then watching my videos is really helpful and you can watch and watch and watch and rewatch them and send them to other people and that would really help me too yeah that's it that's everything for today if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to leave it a like and a comment and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not done that already it would mean a lot to me that's it thank you so much for watching i hope you're having a wonderful day stay safe out there and i will see you in my next video bye